Between the kids being home and hosting, everything in our house gets used up in summer. With Instacart, I can save money by stocking up on all my favorite summer brands. I save time by getting everything delivered in as fast as an hour. And I save myself a sink full of dirty dishes by stocking up on paper plates for the annual summer cookout. Save more on summer essentials? Spend more time enjoying summer. Add summer to cart. Download the app to get free delivery on your first three orders. Offer valid for a limited time. Minimum $10 per order. Additional terms apply. Today on CityCast Philly, you know what's been bugging me? Those spotted lantern flies. And it's not just me. Philadelphians have been smashing these invasive insects since they first showed up in the city back in 2017. Now, there aren't as many this year, but they're still around. So in 2023, should we still be swatting at these bugs or leaving them alone? It's Monday, September 11th. I'm Trinae and here's what Philly's talking about. Henry Savage, you're a civics reporter for the Philadelphia Inquirer, and you write these how-to guides on how to navigate the city. You recently wrote about spotted lanternflies and how they're impacting the city today. Yes. I'm here to talk about Philadelphia's number one enemy, besides the Dallas Cowboys. Oh, that's a good one, Henry. (laughs) (laughs) First, can you describe what these spotted lantern flies even look like? They are kind of like a bigger fly, but they have these wings that are spotted, very red, and they have kind of gray wings on the back of them. There, there's something that if you grew up in the area, or honestly, if you grew up in the United States, they're not native to here, you would have never seen them before. So when you right. see them for the first time, you're like, whoa. All right, so where did they come from? So the spotted lanternfly was first detected in South Korea in 2004. What they saw there was they were wreaking havoc on grape and fruit trees, like apple, and timber, things like that. We knew that they're pests. They can really do a lot of damage to local plants and things like that. So then fast forward 2014, they actually touched down. Pennsylvania is kind of the first place in the United States that gets the spotted lanternfly. In uh, Berks County, Pennsylvania, like an hour outside of Philadelphia, there was a landscaping company that sourced stone materials from all over They had a pallet of stone that seemingly had spotted lanternfly egg masses. So they come here and that's kind of where it all started. You use the term pest and I said it in the intro. They bug me. Why are they such a pest? Why are they so annoying? I think because they are, one, there's usually so many of them. They reproduce like wild each year. Each egg mass has 30 to 50 eggs. So one lanternfly could produce 100 more. Oh my gosh. (laughs) And the big thing is that they have these little sucking mouth parts that get into plants and trees and just start taking all the nutrients, all those things that the tree and plant needs to be healthy, And in some cases, it's outright killed plants, but in a lot of cases, it's just really hurt them or just stunted their growth. Interesting. Okay, so where can we find these bugs in the city? Yes. Well, the big thing is that they will attach to anything, specifically the egg masses. Like, they'll plant them on smooth surfaces. They can be on the sides of trees. A lot of times in, like you had mentioned, in 2017 is when Philly was really getting hit hard. And actually, 2018 to 2020 is when that classic, it was just like mass execution of spotted lanternflies in the streets. They had the Squisher app where people could, you know, compete against each other to get as many as they could. And I I know there was like a retiree in the suburbs who was like filling up a bucket, like thousands of them, like every week or something like that. There was even like a... Of a brand of like salt gun that did like a Rambo video kind of thing of them taking down lantern flies, but they will be anywhere. And people, you can see them on the sides of trees and they would 
just kind of be everywhere. Um, a lot of the college campuses, you would look at a sidewalk and sometimes you couldn't even see the sidewalk. There was just that many of them. Mm. I remember people said they were in, an evasive species, right? Now, can you remind us, is that the reason why Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture encouraged us to kill them? That's correct. Yep. They're not from here. Our plants, our agriculture, those things, they have evolved to live in this ecosystem and interact with the insects and other things that are in those ecosystems. When you drop something in that ecosystem that loves to eat it and go to town on certain plants, it's a big issue. Henry, what was that point where we started to see a decrease in spotted lantern flies being a- around so much? From 2018 to 2020 was the big spotted lantern fly mass execution across the city. 2021, 2022, they, they seemed to stop being in such large numbers. We weren't seeing them all over the sidewalks. We weren't seeing them all over parks. You'd still see them. And if you go outside today, you probably will go find one. I totally see them around here. <laughs> Absolutely. But they're just not in the same numbers as they were. And granted, all of this could be cyclical. Who knows? Maybe in the next couple of years, they come back in large numbers. Right. That's kind of the reason why we did that story where that that hunger or that that blood thirst for killing them isn't here. And it's for a reason. I guess we just don't need to really go to town on them anymore. So we, we've been doing a great job smashing them and, and sw- smacking them and <laughs> all that stuff. Yes, we definitely we definitely have. Hey, listeners, trying to get the word out about your company, cause, or event? Look no further than A-List Promotions. They're a Philly-based, female-owned and operated direct marketing business that's been around for more than 25 years, bringing your message right to where your target consumers live, work, shop, and play. A-List tackles street marketing in five different ways. Residential delivery, like door hangers, retail displays, from posters to flyer drop-offs at local cashier counters. Event staffing, that means brand ambassador teams bring your message face-to-face at live events. And A-List will even handle all of your bulk mailing needs, from design to printing to distribution. Oh, and don't worry, A-List provides proof of distribution for every completed campaign. A-List Promotions, we bring people to your event. Visit alistpromo.com to find out more. Wait, are you gaming on a Chromebook? Yep, yeah, it's got a high-res 120 hertz display, plus this killer RGB keyboard, and I can access thousands of games anytime, anywhere. Stop playing. What? Get out of here. Huh? Yeah. I want you to stop playing and get out of here so I can game on that Chromebook. Got it. Discover the ultimate cloud gaming machine, a new kind of Chromebook. Henry, in your reporting, not only were these lantern flies impacting Pennsylvania economically, it also was impacting agriculturally. How bad has it been? The big thing in Pennsylvania and with spotted lantern flies is that grapes and timber, Pennsylvania timber, and we also have a lot of vineyards. So actually in 2019, they released an economic impact survey that estimated that it could cost like $300 million plus a year in agriculture business, and I think like over 2,000 jobs a year. Granted, it doesn't seem to have had the worst severe impact that they had first estimated, but they've definitely been a a huge issue for vineyards in Pennsylvania. Now, I actually spoke to um, an evolutionary biologist, Julie Urban, who did her dissertation on plant hoppers, which the spotted lanternfly is. She was one of the first people to get called up in 2014. I joked with her, it was kind of like the biology Avengers or the A-team getting called up to kind of like figure out what to do. They really looked at this and said, it's going to have immense impact on our agriculture business. According to Urban, it's hard to quantify how much damage actually has been done, 
However, to her and other experts, it was not at all what we expected. What we found out was that a lot of these plants actually were able to fight back. They were able to recover after lanternflies would, you know, feed on them and then plant hop, go somewhere else, and they would be able to recover. However, grape trees, grape vines, they're the ones that they don't do as well, which is kind of where the scientists are putting a lot of their focus now in Pennsylvania. What is the most effective way to manage a widespread invasive species like we've seen with the spot and lanternfly? These high population, high risk places, which is stuff like Harrisburg Airport, the Philadelphia ports. These are places where there could be a high population of them. But the big risk now is transporting them elsewhere. They're already in 14 states in the United States, and scientists are really trying to just keep them there because if they go into other places, they're going to start having this problem. So what they do is they take sprays, insecticides, and they go to these places and try to do their best to eradicate as many as they can. Obviously, we weren't successful in completely eradicating them. So it's kind of finding where they are and just trying their best to kind of whack-a-mole, trying to figure out what they can do for them. I know I've talked a lot about the hate for these bugs, but is there any good that they could bring to the ecosystem? That's funny you say that, actually. Tony Crosdale, he was one of the directors at the Wissahickon Environmental Center. He brought up that they actually sometimes go after invasive plant species, So who knows, like where we're at now and scientists are looking into these things, figuring out how to manage them because we can't get rid of them. So how can we manage and protect our agriculture and then also studying them and see what they do? Now, maybe in five years, we find out that there could be a good use for them. Interesting. So keep stomping them. Yes. So that to bring it bring it back home to Philadelphians. Yes, you, you're you encouraged to stomp them. Now, you as an individual will not be able to get rid of them. We will not be able to get rid of them in Pennsylvania. But what about your garden? You know, they could be an eyesore. Please feel free to stomp whenever you see them. You still can. Go to town. Now, the good news is that your garden plants will most likely be fine. So when you see them, stomp them. However, They do warn against using pesticides. They say be cautious because pesticides, you might treat a certain area, but that area could then affect other beneficial plants and also beneficial insects like bees. So, you know, stomp when you can in your gardens, maybe not pesticides. And the other big thing is your vehicles, because if you're doing a road trip, if you're going to be going anywhere, You need to check the underside of your car, maybe those bike racks, those baskets on the top of cars to put luggage, because you don't want to be the person that brings the spotter lanternfly to a place that doesn't have them. That was Henry Savage, civics reporter for the Philadelphia Inquirer. Thank you so much for the tips and for joining me on CityCast Philly. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. To read Henry's full story on these darn spotted lanternflies, check out the link in our show notes. That's all for today here on CityCast Philly. If you enjoyed this episode about spotted lanternflies, tell a friend, rate the show, leave us a review, and hit that subscribe button. And be sure to sign up for our morning newsletter, Hey Philly, to learn more about what else Philly's talking about. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more news from around the city. Bye. Spotted lantern flies, lantern flies, spotted lantern flies, lantern flies, yeah.